dosage should you take? Better yet, what dosage shouldn't you take? Now, this question is not as simple as X amount is going to be a standard dose and Y amount is going to be a micro dose because of the way that psychedelics interact so vastly different for each individual and the fact that a psychedelic such as LSD is potent at the microgram level, whereas psilocybin isn't potent until you get to the milligram level. Now, there are generalizations or broad strokes that we can make about dosing out individual psychedelics, and I'm going to break it down in three ways. You have a standard dose, a micro dose, and then a hero's dose. Before we kick things off, I do want to say that I in no way condone or encourage the consumption of any scheduled substance. This video exists only for education and harm reduction purposes. With that out of the way, let's get into it. So a standard dose of a psychedelic is going to be the most common dose that elicits a psychedelic trip. Now, keep in mind, this is not the minimum dose required to receive a trip, but it's just the one that you find people taking most often and is the most consistent way to get yourself into that trip-like state. Because, of course, you could take 90 micrograms of LSD and still get a pretty decent trip, but 100 micrograms is what's considered standard and even up to like 150 or so. Now, there are literally thousands of different psychedelics that exist, and I could not possibly list out all of them with their standard or recommended dosages to trip off of. So we're just going to stick to the common ones. So with LSD, you have the 100 microgram range for a standard dose with mushrooms. And this number can vary quite a lot. But with Golden Teachers specifically, you have one and a half to two grams is going to be your standard dose for mushrooms. Keep in mind, that's not the amount of psilocybin you're actually getting, but that's the, uh, the weight of mushrooms that you're going to munch on. Then you have something like 2CB, which if you aren't familiar with, mimics the effects of LSD, but has a different structure to it. At any rate, that standard dose is somewhere in the 20 to 30 milligram range, again, depending on a number of variables. And lastly, we have DMT, which is going to give you a trip at six milligrams, and that trip will gradually get more intense or quite quickly get more intense depending on your gradations all the way up until the breakthrough DMT trip, which is an entire video in and of itself. Moving on, we have the microdose, which has been gaining a lot of popularity over the past few years. And a microdose is simply taking a sub psychedelic dose of a psychedelic drug. So it's anywhere from a 20th of a standard dose all the way up to a fifth of a standard dose, depending on what number isn't going to actually give you trip like a Effects. So the most commonly microdosed drugs are psilocybin and LSD just because of their prominence and how easy it is to get access to them. But it is worth noting that you can microdose on pretty much any psychedelic and MDMA has actually been being looked at for clinical uses more recently. So the reason that people will microdose is specifically to not trip because these compounds appear to have near limitless medicinal uses. So someone will begin taking, let's say, a tenth of a gram of mushrooms on every third day or every other day or some consistent schedule in order to receive medical benefits that can range anywhere from improving your focus, your creativity, your productivity, decreasing symptoms of anxiety, depression, PTSD, or giving yourself higher energy levels. It can even be used to alleviate symptoms of PMS and just pain in general and it can be used to assist in smoking cessation and other addictions as well. So the list just goes on and on for the, the types of benefits that you can receive from microdosing. And the truly remarkable thing with microdosing is that there seems to be, it appears as such, at least currently, that there are no adverse side effects or at the very least that the adverse side effects that do exist are extremely rare and exist in only very specific cases. So you can just stop microdosing cold turkey and have no withdrawals and no adverse symptoms from stopping taking the compound, which is completely contrary to every other solution for mental illness or other ailment of the mind and body that exists currently. And I'll kind of seal off this portion about microdosing with my own personal take. 
I genuinely believe that you can use microdosing as a way to introduce yourself to a full trip. You can start with a sub psychedelic dose and use that for its medicinal purposes. And as you become interested in and want to, you know, try out tripping for yourself, you can gradually increase that dosage till you hit a threshold. And then you'll know a threshold dose for your particular biology and how that threshold, you know, kind of feels and how you react to that threshold. Then you can keep building up the dosage until you achieve what you would consider a full true trip. And trust me, once you actually get to that point, it's not going to be subtle anymore. You're going to know that you are tripping. But this is a way that you can kind of say, oh, I really don't like that without being fully immersed in the trip. And then you know that that particular psychedelic or even psychedelics in general, at least for a tripping purpose, aren't necessarily for you. And you don't have to take on that risk of potentially taking too much your first time and then having such an intense trip that you can't handle and then have a bad time and swear off psychedelics forever which we don't want finally we have the hero's dose and it's simple if 100 micrograms of lsd is going to give you a nice comfortable trip that isn't going to completely remove you from reality and fuck your mind then one milligram of lsd is going to put you on a one-way rocket ship ride to fucking tripville where you are going to see hear and experience some truly mind fucking shit now i have never done this i think it's reckless and it's definitely not respecting your compounds the only time i ever see a hero's dose as something i would like to take or as something that's even necessary is with dmt because at least in my mind the spirit molecule is something that is intended to be used to help you reach that alternate dimension of the troposphere or the dmt realm or whatever you want to fucking call it but that's what DMT is used for, at least in my mind. You can obviously take a regular trip dose of DMT, but if I'm ever gonna do it, I'm gonna fucking blast off, baby. In simple terms, a hero's dose is any absurd amount of a psychedelic. I personally know people that have taken eight or nine hits of acid at once, or they've sat down and eaten 10, 15, 20 grams of mushrooms, and that's a hero's dose. Hell, four hits of acid is going to be a heroic dose. Now, the reason it's referred to as a heroic dose is because people who take that much of a psychedelic, in general, not saying this is true for everyone, some people do need to take four grams of mushrooms in order to get a standard trip because their tolerance has been built up due to frequent use of that particular compound. However, in general, and just broad strokes here, this is not a statement I'm making that's true for everyone, but in general, people who take large amounts of a psychedelic, especially truly absurd numbers, like 20 grams of mushrooms, are doing it to be a hero. They're doing it to say, hey, look how much of a psychedelic I fucking took. Or they're just taking that much to see how intense of a trip they can get out of the compound. And that is something that I advise strongly against. That's all I have for this one. I hope that it helped you understand dosages just a little bit more. If you have anything you want to ask me or tell me about, do not hesitate to drop it in the comments. And as always, like, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Peace.